Mental Health Education Series, Module 6, Motivational Interviewing, Part 1. I'm Dr. Brecky, and I'm here with Ready, Set, Smile to talk about an incredibly useful tool to talk to patients about their oral health. Motivational Interviewing, Part 1 and 2, describes a common technique for helping others to achieve behavioral change. This is not the only technique for helping others to change behaviors, but it's one of the more useful. It can be applied in oral health education settings, like yours. These modules are subject to copyright by Dr. Brecky and Ready, Set, Smile. So what we'll review in an introduction to motivational interviewing is first understanding change, motivational interviewing itself, the fundamental concepts of motivational interviewing, cultural competency, health disparities, and improving oral health with motivational interviewing. Changing daily behaviors is one of the most difficult tasks to accomplish. However, behavioral change is key to improving overall health, health-related and health-related habits. Humans are resistant to change. It's just natural. So how do we achieve this? Motivational interviewing. This is a unique tool and solution for prompting successful change. Motivational interviewing is a collaborative conversation between two people which helps to promote and enable change. It's a patient-centered counseling style which focuses on shared decision-making and overcoming resistance to change. What are motivations to change? What feelings of ambivalence might exist? How do we tackle ambivalence or hesitation to change? Why is this relevant here? Why are we talking about motivational interviewing? Well, just remember, we are in an arena of patient-centered care. That is the best way to help patients achieve comprehensive, holistic, culturally competent care in today's society. And it also puts the person in the center of the conversation. So motivational interviewing is a way to help the patient find his or her own way to wanting to change and also those solutions to, to change their behaviors. <clears throat> so let's remember, different people in different situations may require vastly different approaches to communication and prompting change. And that's the key. The goal, helping the individual to, one, acknowledge the need for behavior change, two, explore their ambivalence or resistance to change and seek solutions, and three, feel empowered and also motivated to achieve their goals. Change. Remember, acknowledging the need for change for an individual may require, bing bing, education. So remember, brush up on all of your oral health knowledge that you've learned throughout this lecture series, because in this situation, the educator may be you. So some oral health topics to first review. The prevention of tooth decay or dental caries. Nutrition. Fluoride use. Daily oral hygiene and healthy habits. And the prevention of oral diseases. This isn't a full list, but this should help you to help educate others about oral health. Motivational interviewing. It's a puzzle piece. It's a communication skill or style which helps to elicit change in a person by helping them to realize their own needs and desires. This was described by Elwin in 2014, but instead of viewing resistance as a problem or a failure, Motivational interviewing approaches resistance as ambivalence that should be explored and resolved, and in doing so, elicits and encourages patients' own motives to change. So there are five key pillars to motivational interviewing. And you, as the interviewer, must embrace all five to help others find their way um, and, you know, complete successful motivational interviewing with another. First, expressing empathy. Two, dealing with resistance, three, handling discrepancy, fourth, supporting self-efficacy, and five, developing autonomy.
So what is expressing empathy? Attempt to understand and even share the feelings of the individual. Place yourself in their shoes. Ensure the individual understands that you respect and accept their disposition, even if it's different than yours. Create a collaborative, non-judgmental relationship. Deal with resistance. This is where it's important to try not to convince the individual that change is necessary. Our goal is for them to find their way to acknowledge that change might be necessary. Avoid arguments, even when frustrated, and eliminate labels and stereotypes, because that is not positive nor constructive and it won't get us anywhere. Handle discrepancy. Identify and confront differences between behavior and between goals. Help the patient determine consequences of behavior. Try to allow the patient to seek his or her own solutions for change, rather than telling the person, you should really floss more. Help the person to realize that that might be an issue, um, and maybe educating them about the importance is really the, the limit of your scope in this situation, but um, can really, really help when handling discrepancies. Support self-efficacy. Allow the person to find their own way. Maintain positivity, even during hangups. And always support optimism, because they will succeed, and so will you. Develop autonomy. The power of change resides within the individual. So help the, help the individual to find that power, find that feeling of power. Allow the individual to control the process of understanding that there's a need and then finding the solutions to fulfill um, that need. The key here, it's finding the balance between education and motivation. And of course, the key to successful motivational interviewing, spirit. Maintaining a positive, bright spirit is one of the best things you can do to help others in successful motivational interviewing. So here's a tip, think ORS. O-A-R-S. O, -A -R -S. o open-ended questions. Try not to ask yes or no answers. Try to stimulate the individual to speak and, you know, find dialogue and, and um, solutions on their own. A, affirmations. Be positive and supportive. R, reflective listening. S, summaries. Make sure to summarize what they're saying in a way that helps them to hear it back so that they find their way um, in searching for solutions. So let's talk about health. How does this technique apply? Well, particular groups experience a disproportionate burden of disease. Now, Preventable differences in the burden of disease or ability to achieve optimal health are also called health disparities. And this is very important. Health disparities, according to the CDC, health disparities are inequitable and are directly related to the historical and current unequal distribution of social, political, economic, and environmental resources. More specifically, think about differences in race and ethnicity, in gender, education, income, disability status, geographic location, or even sexual orientation. This isn't a full list, but keep in mind those suffering from health disparities may be key contenders for motivational interviewing. These high-risk groups may share common risk factors which do indeed affect oral health. For common risk factors, there's two different types. There's modifiable and there's non-modifiable. Modifiable risk factors are things like tobacco or drug use, an unhealthy diet, alcohol use, poor oral hygiene, physical inactivity, things that can be modified. Non-modifiable risk factors include things like genetics, age, sex. They are fixed and they cannot be changed, but they still may contribute to one's risk. And we must also consider social determinants of health. Now these include socioeconomic conditions, 
cultural norms, segregation and discrimination, language or literacy barriers, religious affiliations, access to educational or work opportunities, access to healthcare services, access to resources necessary for daily living. And these are extremely, extremely important when thinking about one's um, entire picture when it comes to health and wellness. Understanding these core concepts is essential in becoming a successful and effective motivational interviewer. So we must combine motivational interviewing with oral health education in order to achieve success. And through motivational interviewing, you have the power to transform health and change lives, especially when you think about those suffering from health disparities. Um, it's really, really important to keep a full picture of all, all areas of life related to health when helping others to find their own ways to successful behavior change and improved wellness. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. Theodore Roosevelt. Thank you to our sponsors. With questions regarding this module, please contact Becky Huddleston at gmail.com, and we will see you next time for part two of motivational interviewing. Thank you.